jittery gland the pituitary gland also important in this endocrine system of human beings so we call this pituitary gland is master gland master gland means it regulates all other endocrine glands that's why pituitary gland is called as master gland pituitary gland is located in where it is located in a bony cavity called cella torsica so this cella torsica is a depression present in the sphenoid bone generally cella torsica is a cavity which is formed by modification of sphenoid bone and is attached to the hypothalamus that means pituitary gland attached to the hypothalamus by a stalk that stalk is called as infundibulum stalk stalk of hypothalamus by a stalk it is divided which is pituitary gland pituitary gland is divided anatomically into adenohypophysis and a neurohypophysis so pituitary gland contains two portions so adenohypophysis anterior pituitary gland anterior pituitary neurohypophysis posterior pituitary so adenohypophysis is closely merged with the one more middle lobe of pituitary middle lobe of pituitary so anterior lobe middle lobe posterior lobe now anterior lobe of pituitary middle lobe of pituitary together we are telling adenohypophysis adenohypophysis means anterior lobe of pituitary and middle lobe of pituitary together that's why anterior lobe is closely merged with middle lobe of pituitary form adenohypophysis so that's why here anterior pituitary is called as pars distalis anterior lobe of pituitary is called as pars distalis middle lobe of pituitary is called as pars intermedia middle lobe of pituitary is called as pars intermedia and posterior lobe of pituitary is called as pars nervosa so three lobes we are observing but anterior lobe and middle lobe closely merged to form adenohypophysis so anterior lobe is pars distalis middle lobe is pars intermedia posterior lobe is pars nervosa so here separately are telling adenohypophysis neurohypophysis adenohypophysis consists of adenohypophysis consists of two portions pars distalis and pars ner intermedia pars distalis pars intermedia means anterior lobe of pituitary pars distalis middle lobe of pituitary pars intermedia so the pars distalis region of pituitary commonly called as anterior pituitary so which pars distalis pituitary is anterior pituitary produces growth hormone prolactin thyroid stimulating hormone 
adrenocorticotropic hormone luteinizing hormone follicle stimulating hormone so pars distal secretes six important hormones growth hormone prolactin adrenocorticotropic hormone thyroid stimulating hormone follicular stimulating hormone luteinizing hormone this six hormone secreted from the pars distalis and pars intermedia secretes only one hormone that one hormone is called melanocyte stimulating hormone msh secreted from the middle lobe of pituitary middle lobe secretes only one hormone msh melanocyte stimulating hormone however in humans a pars intermedia is almost merged with pars distalis so in human beings they are telling specifically that's why they will tell that in human beings melanocyte stimulating hormone is not distinct function there is no distinct function of melanocyte stimulating hormone in humans that's why you are telling here in humans the pars intermedia is almost merged with pars distalis so melanocyte stimulating hormone may not be a functional in human beings it may be functional other vertebrates like stimulates melanocytes synthesis melanin secretions like right neurohypophysis pars nervosa posterior lobe of pituitary posterior pituitary stores and releases two hormones that means neurohypophysis stores and releases they are telling but means it do not secretes neurohypophysis stores and releases it do not secretes very so from where that hormones are secreting and storing in neurohypophysis means from hypothalamus so neurohypophysis stores and releases hypothalamus that we discussed about hypothalamus directly regulate the posterior pituitary so hypothalamus secretes not only releasing and inhibiting hormones also but also oxytocin vasopressin r a d h these two hormones also secreted from the hypothalamus from their nerve endings comes and stored in the posterior lobe of pituitary neurohypophysis stored in the posterior pituitary whenever posterior pituitary is stimulated posterior pituitary it stores releases stores and releases oxytocin and vasopressin oxytocin and vasopressin that's why that which are actually synthesized by the hypothalamus and are transported axonally to the neurohypophysis so hypothalamic hypothalamic neurosecretory cells axons transport the hormones to the neurohypophysis there in posterior pituitary it stores and releases when it requires okay 
so the functions of every hormone is very important the hormones and its functions we will see because when we see the definition of hormone already when we see in the beginning hormones do not secrete more it's are its requirement is very trace amounts hormones do not requires more requires very trace amounts and uh, these are acting as intercellular messengers hormones act as intercellular messengers not intracellular messengers hormones act as intercellular messengers and hormone is not providing any nutrients hormones are non nutrient chemicals so by taking these we can tell the definition hormones are non nutrient chemicals act as intercellular messengers and are produced in trace amounts non nutrient chemicals act as intercellular messengers and are produced in trace amounts so it should not requires more of more quantity trace amounts required that's why over secretions of this hormone or lower secretions of these hormones higher secretion causes disorders lower secretions also causes disorders so which should secretes in a balanced way over secretions or under secretions causes abnormalities or diseases so that only we are observing here over secretion of growth hormone stimulates abnormal growth of the body leading to gigantism and low secretions of growth hormone result in stunted growth resulting the pituitary dwarfism so over secretion causes a disease abnormality lower secretion also causes defect so it should secrete in a balanced way over secretions or under secretions causes disorders defects see excess secretions excess secretions of growth hormone generally you can say growth hormone secreted from the pituitary gland where it acts means it acts on almost all the body cells all the somatic cells of the body that means growth hormone is the one of the hormone it does not contains a specific target organ no specific target cell no specific target organ are no specific target cell almost all cells of the body all somatic cells of the body requires growth hormone for its growth and repair so excess secretions of growth hormone in adults especially in middle age can result in severe disfigurement especially if of the face called acromegaly see here one disease one defect we are observing over secretion leads to gigantism and also over secretion especially in adult that means uh, what about gigantism means before puberty over secretion of growth hormone before puberty causes gigantism over secretion of the same growth hormone after puberty in adults over secretion of growth hormone after puberty before puberty after puberty before puberty over secretion causes gigantism elongation of the bone suckers 
elongation of the bones body becomes so weak thin limbs we can observe more height thin limbs at the same way after puberty especially what they are telling disfigurement of the face facial abnormalities abnormalities in the face disfigurement means generally face should not be proper lower jaw and the eye eyebrows which will becomes disfigurement not in normal shape so such type of over secretion causes over growth of the facial bones causes disfigurement so it may leads to serious complications acromegaly leads to serious complications premature death if unchecked so premature death occurs in case of acromegaly the disease is hard to diagnose in early stages and often goes undetected for many years until changes in external features becomes noticeable that means we cannot find this disease acromegaly cannot be found till external features are noticeable so it is undetected for many years in early stage we cannot found we cannot detect so it may leads to death so like gigantism before puberty and acromegaly after puberty the two are due to over secretions same way lower secretions of growth hormone causes dwarfism dwarfism due to lower secretions of growth hormone that dwarfism we are telling pituitary dwarfism pituitary dwarfism also called as midget pituitary dwarfism or midget pituitary dwarfism is different from thyroid dwarfism thyroid hormone deficiency also causes dwarfism that is different your pituitary dwarfism only we are studying in this they are short height but psychologically sexually normal that means pituitary dwarfism they are sexually and intellectually not abnormal sexually intellectually they are normal sexually and intellectually pituitary dwarfism are normal due to lower secretions of a pit uh, growth hormone generally elongation of the bones do not takes place that means growth centers present in the ends of the long bones we call that are epiphyseal plates contains growth centers that epiphyseal plates that growth centers closes earlier and uh, growth becomes uh, stops so pituitary dwarfism leads to uh, that that occurs mainly due to lower secretions of growth hormone early premature closure of epiphyseal centers or premature closure of growth plates in the epi growth centers in the epiphyseal plates okay so that is about pituitary dwarfism due to lower secretion before puberty it is also very important lower secretions of growth hormone before puberty likewise lower secretions of growth hormone after puberty also takes place after puberty growth hormone becomes low lower secretions of growth hormone after puberty 
after puberty also causes a disease defect called as acromicria acromicria where the body is normal height normal height normal intellectual capabilities we can observe but small head head is small and uh, their feet hands and feet also small hands feet are small head is small head and small eyes microphthalmia we can observe small head small eyes small short of hands and short limbs we can say four limbs and hind limbs become short four limbs and hind limbs become short but normal height acromicria that is seen after puberty due to growth hormone lower secretions after puberty lower secretions of growth hormone after puberty cause acromicria okay that's all